Hey folks, Michael Mann for Michael Mann Security Services. Welcome to the Church Security Minute. We're going to talk about use of force model, your use of force model for your volunteers or even contract security for using contract security folks. Hey guys, if you want to get a hold of us and ladies, uh, you can get me at contact at michaelmannsecurityservice.com or you can call me directly at 615-956-3912. Leave me a message and I will get back with you directly. So let's talk about the use of force model for church security teams. So Use of force. In general, there are two categories in every state in the U.S. There's deadly force or what some people uh, or what some states would call lethal force. Same thing. And then there's non-deadly force or non-lethal force. Deadly force, any force likely to or intended to cause death, serious bodily harm. Non-deadly force, any force not likely or intended to cause that uh, death, serious bodily harm or death or serious bodily injury. The Statistically, more than likely, the uh, when you start talking about risk, the most likely force that a citizen or a church security volunteer is going to use more than likely would be non-deadly force. OK, now this applies to both volunteers. So if you're managing a security volunteer team or ministry uh, or, or you're just part of it, this applies to those volunteers. And also, if your church is hiring contract security, they need a use of force model. And what I found in my experience and uh, in many years in security and managing contract forces, even uh, in churches, um, a lot of times a use of force model is not supplied for that contract security. So if you're managing that portion, like you guys are, you know, you know you're paying somebody to do this, a company, and you've got uniform guards or whatever, they're contractors, um, and they're being paid, I would ensure, even though you're transferring that risk somewhat to that contract security company, you want to make sure that they have some sort of use of force model and training. Okay, use of force model. Here is what it is. So uh, you'll see here that, and this is this comes from the National Institute of Justice. This is just an example of a use of force model. Um, the use of force model is a guideline that your team can use as a standard that gives them an idea of how much force to use in whatever situation. Now here we've got the elements that would be used by the volunteer or that security officer, that contract officer. Um, and all of this is based off of the perception of what's happening at the time by the officer that's involved in the use of force incident, their level of training, uh, the level of resistance that is being uh, offered by the person, that aggressive person. Um, uh, so there's a lot of issues or elements involved in the use of force when we start talking about church security teams uh, and contractors. So, uh, so whether their volunteers are being paid. So a lot to think about when we talk about the use of force, which is why the use of force model is so important. Um, now, some other considerations to think about when we look at this model. Uh, what are the legal requirements in your state for citizens when it comes to the use of force? Because they are different depending on the state. Some states like Tennessee, where I'm at, um, are very friendly towards citizens. We can detain through two circumstances. We can use intermediate weapons or any force necessary to actually effectuate a detainment or an arrest up to and including the use of deadly force. Uh, physical and mechanical restraints can be used in use of force, but that's in the state of Tennessee. If you go to like Georgia, it's different. OK, what's the level of training and certification of your volunteers? What level of training and certification have you provided for them or have they provided for themselves? What resources does the church have? You know, do you have the ability to do this, to set up training, to have somebody manage a use of force model? And then uniformity. Do you want everybody to be the same? And if, it, if everyone doesn't look the same, what risk do you create for your house of worship? And remember, all of this is subjective. The use of force, especially when it comes to articulation and when uh, we do this and the state starts to look to make sure that we follow the law if somebody does use force, uh, it's a very subjective subject. And again, going back to the model itself, it is based on the perception of the person that was actually using the force at the time to defend themselves or somebody else, the perception of people around them, like what they saw, like what witnesses believe to be happening because that's going to come into play, the level of training, the level of resistance being provided by that aggressive person, escalating factors, things like size, number of people that they were dealing with. So there's a lot to think about when we start talking about use of force and the use of force model, but I think this is necessary, or I know it is, 
even for your volunteers, if there's any risk that they are going to be involved in dealing with an aggressive person. Um, and then, you know, they're going to have to use anything from empty hand control on up. Okay. All right, folks, if you have any questions about the use of force model, you can get us again at contact at michaelmansecuritysearch.com. You can call me directly at 615-956-3912. Remember, folks, it is about prevention, not response.